all the eminent people on the stage. Um, all the wonderful people of Trivandrum and Kerala and great souls of Bharatvarsh, my namaskaram to you. Thank you Gokulji for inviting me. I have been running an extremely busy schedule. For last six months I have not gone home, not slept more than three hours, four hours I am running. Day and night, they know, even just now, I was drinking tea because I am running from press conference to this place. But when Gokul called me, I promised him that I'll come to Kerala to thank the wonderful people of Kerala who supported this film. <laughs> this is not a film. The Kashmir Files was never a film for me. And I must give you a disclaimer. I do not make feature films. I am on a mission. My mission is to spread the greatness of Hindu civilization to the entire world and especially the youth. And in that process, I also make films. I give lectures, I write columns, I write books, I run a foundation where we mentor young people, help them bring Indic Renaissance in this country. And all this I want to share with you what I am doing because a lot of people have misconceptions about me. Today, a lot of brilliant young journalists were talking to me assuming so many things about me so I thought I'll use this opportunity to clear lots of doubts and very honestly like your brother like your son like your colleague I'll share very honestly what I'm trying to do I am a great believer of Shiva and I, my entire young days, my youth has been influenced by two people, Adi Shankaracharya and Swami Vivekanand. And I have understood the value of Hindu culture, Hindu civilization, Hindu philosophy through these two great people and of course Shiva's uh, philosophy. And what I understood that when the Western countries or the Western people were capturing geographical lands with violence, with guns, at that time we were conquering our minds. This is the fundamental difference between us and the West. Which is why we value great relationships, we value mother nature, we value diversity. Perhaps we are the only society left in the world which gives you absolute freedom of faith. Absolute freedom. You believe in God, you are a Hindu. If you don't believe in God, you are a Hindu. Whether you are a Astic, you are a Hindu. Whether you are a Nastic, you are a Hindu. Whether you believe in dualism of, or you believe in Advaita, non-dualism, still you are a Hindu. You can criticize your gods. Lot of people I know have also abused gods, even they were Hindus. We have no set rules. Because we believed there's a concept called Anekantvad, which means there are millions of ways to arrive at the truth. Saying your way is wrong is violence. 
negating anybody else's belief to the path of truth is violence non violence is not what gandhi ji has preached us of course it is just a part of it but that is not non violence non violence is giving you absolute freedom of thought and we still practice it i saw in one family in tamil nadu i was in chennai the other day <coughs> and i they invited me for lunch in their own family one child was wearing the tilak like this and one was wearing like this one was vaishnav and one was shaiv and the daughter who went to europe she says there is no god and these three children rationalized their beliefs with logic but their mother their mother she worships god she worships plants she worships every stone she worships birds i asked her why do you worship so many things she said i don't know in one family there are people with different ways of practicing their faith or not practicing live happily they have the same purpose they have love they have peace they have harmony and this is what i am very proud of the diversity extreme diversity and this is exactly what if you see adi shankaracharya's philosophy is very simply speaking i don't want to get into the complex advaita can get very complex but just to put it very simple he said we all are one everything is one it is manifested in many ways but at the source level it is one and that's exactly what shaivism is also all about and that's what swami vivekananda also said and if you ask any hindu in the world he'll also say the same thing in a different way but rest of the world is not like that we don't talk about diversity but we practice diversity rest of the world talks about diversity but does not practice diversity which is why this is the reason see this world is full of invasions not only india the entire world and this mostly this world has been invaded by two faiths one is christianity and the second is islam in whichever country christians and islamic invaders reached those countries converted fully 100% wherever christian colonial forces went those countries became 100% christian countries australia a lot of african countries in europe wherever islamic invaders went those countries became islamic countries you see in africa so many countries became fully christian fully islamic in fact in africa there is a country i am forgetting the name when when the christian colonizers reached there within 2 hours in 2 hours the entire country surrendered and they said all of us are christians and became a christian country now look at the beauty of india we are the only society in the world which was ruled for 1000 years by the minorities 1000 years by the minorities 800 years by the muslim invaders next 200 years by christian invaders next 70 years let's forget that but let's take 1000 years for 1000 years we were ruled by the minorities 
yet when we found freedom we were mostly a hindu country how did this happen this happened because of our great belief in diversity we do not protect our culture in a organized manner like the church or the mosques do there is no book which says this is how you have to protect your religion there are no sermons you are not baptized yet it survives it survives because of two reasons one that we know that we know that the only good value for the humanity to survive is the freedom of diversity this is our great belief in freedom liberal values progressive values that hindu civilization is the only surviving civilization in the world and i am very proud of this fact that we are the only surviving civilization all civilizations have ended all died all perished so our great belief in this oneness that you can have a tilak like this or like this or no tilak yet we are one and the second most important reason which nobody talks about if hindu civilization has survived is because of our great mothers everybody else makes everything intellectual everybody tells you you should practice this because this is good but our mothers don't tell us that they don't say to our children you do this because this is the best religion they just don't do anything they just keep sacrificing so much of sacrifice so much of sacrifice you will find only in our mothers nowhere in the world i have traveled everywhere our mothers so many are sitting here am i right or wrong i am asking you you will not eat your food one day but you will not let your children and your guests go hungry am i right you hardly wear sarees because you think if i spend more money on my clothes then it can come for good use for my children for your husband our mothers instill such great values in our children and this is one of the reasons why our civilization has survived civilizations don't survive with guns and swords if civilizations had to survive with swords and guns then aztec civilization mayan civilization mongol civilization roman civilization greek civilizations would have survived they had guns but we survived because we have mothers and i'll tell you the mother the value of mothers wherever indians are everywhere in the world everybody i am sure half of the people's children are in america or uk or somewhere today working but wherever you go in the world and you ask about indians if you say chinese they'll say oh these people you can't trust they negotiate a lot if you say french people they'll say oh these are very snobbish people i can't trust them you say americans they say no 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 they are very sharp business people i can't trust them if you say a british people they'll say no 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 these are very snobbish more or less you'll see there is a trust deficit the problem is of trust and which is true if you go to america you'll find if you are in trouble walking on the road the cars will keep going on nobody trusts each other my money your money the son tells father it's my money it's your money this is my room that's your room this is my job this is your job husband and wife this is your job this is my job everything so you can't trust them this is all professional relationships but when you ask about indians 
all over the world whether you are in australia europe america africa asia wherever you go what is the image of indian indians we can trust indians and this trust believe you me trust is the most important human value imagine your life you can live without love you can live without money but you can't live without trust think about it what i am saying trust so we our mothers generations after generations have been giving values by showing the power of sacrifice showing the power of simplicity they are instilling values of trust in young children and this trust in each other has kept us together this is our biggest strength and that's what lots of people don't like what are the complaints of the western world with hindu civilization what are the complaints of the leftist people with hindu civilization their complaint number 1 oh they are housewives they don't work so they want to create a doubt in our society they want to tell you that everything you do is wrong they question everything like i said i met this lady who worships everything my my grandmother she used to go to ganga every morning and on her way every stone she would put tilak and put some chawal rice and she would go and i we used to laugh as children i said nani ye kya karti ho and she said you you know all of them have god in them now if you look at it from a leftist point of view or a christian point of view or islamic point of view they'll say this woman is a fool she doesn't know anything there is no god in stone but what is science proving now where is quantum physics the modern science the latest science what is it saying exactly what adi shankaracharya said that this piece of stone has the same energy as you or the god or anything we are all one we are manifested in a different way that is what quantum physics is saying and this is the reason that in the world's best number one uh, laboratory in switzerland cern it's called c e r n outside that there is a huge statue of shiva in cosmic dance there is no statue of any uh, prophet or messenger or any other god there is no statue of einstein or anybody there is a statue of shiva the scientists of the world believe in theories and the philosophies which have emerged from hindu civilization and this is our power our power is our strength lies in this great belief of trusting human beings of trusting each other but people have been taking advantage of this in kashmir it was the highest seat of education that's why shankaracharya also went from kerala to kashmir all the great philosophers scientists everybody went to kashmir from different parts of india wonderful people great people but then sometime in 1300 some people in iran and iraq were persecuted so they ran from there and they took refuge in kashmir and all these kashmiri hindus give gave them refuge because they trusted they trusted them but what happened immediately after some time they took out their swords and they started killing people who did not convert non conversion became a crime
and since then a land which was 100% hindu philosophical religious spiritual land why do you think it was called heaven it was called heaven because these people came with swords it was heaven because of us we made it heaven there are many mountains there are many valleys entire himalaya is full of mountain ranges but we made it heaven with our knowledge with our great values and which these people came to destroy and seven times there were exodus of kashmiri hindus and the land which was a land of rishi kashyap of adi shankaracharya of shiva of saraswati of vyas muni today in that land there is no hindu and look at the look at the hypocrisy and the manipulation of leftists that they control media and education they did not let the world know about this for 32 years they covered it up so when i made a film on this this film united all hindus it's a honest fact because in kerala hindi films of this size don't run even for a day this film came in two screens and it came to 110 or 18 screens it ran for weeks after weeks houseful <laughs> today i met one journalist young girl little leftist and she was interviewing me so i said you are doing my interview you are attacking me without even seeing the film she said no because i couldn't get tickets i said wonderful you did not get tickets <laughs> so in tamil nadu it ran for weeks after weeks houseful it released in so many countries where no hindi film ever released before norway finland mozambique kenya tomorrow it is releasing in israel and it's a great victory for the film on the 6th it is releasing in philippines Indonesia these are all islamic countries i we did not send it there the people are calling this film the the, the muslims of indonesia are very different from muslims in india they are religiously islamic culturally hindu they are religiously islamic but in the evening they practice ramayana they do shows of ramayana they say yes our religion may be islam but whatever we are our identity is hindu civilization they have not disconnected from hindu civilization but our own people have got disconnected so the leftist people when the film came first they didn't know they thought how can anybody you know this man how can he make a film like this but i knew the mind of these people so every single dialogue in my film every single scene i have tons and tons of research with me recorded uh, books articles interviews every single thing so that nobody can question it and look at the i don't know it's a comedy or a tragedy you must have heard lots of people especially in kerala they say oh this film is propaganda so i asked them please tell me which dialogue which scene is wrong they don't know we don't care about that it's a propaganda but why is it a propaganda then they don't talk second allegation every single journalist i meet they say your film is islamophobic now we need to talk about it i am going to take 2 3 minutes talking about it because the world's biggest danger coming for your children is this title called islamophobia so you have to understand this so i asked them what is islamophobia they say oh you know it no i said i don't know it you tell me what is islamophobia they said you are afraid of islam 
I said, okay, if you have seen the film, tell me if there is even one mention of Islam. They said, no. I said, have I used the word Muslim? I said, no. I said, have I used the word Pakistan so that you say Pakistan is an Islamic country? They said, no. So I said, what is this film about? They said, terrorism. So I said, why do you connect terrorism with Islam? You are connecting. I never connected. Why is it that the moment you say terrorism, people say you are Islamophobic? Arundhati Roy says, don't talk about terrorism. They are oppressed people. So I said, okay, maybe they are oppressed people. If they are oppressed, then it's fine. So I did a research. I picked up a list of the world's most dreaded terrorists. I made a huge list from Osama bin Laden till Burhanwani. And when I did research, not even one person was oppressed. All of them came from great families. Osama bin Laden was a prince. Abzal Guru was not an oppressed person. Burhanwani, like Barkhadat says, was a teacher's son. None of them were oppressed. They were all exploited by the religion to pick up guns in the name of the religion. So similarly, wherever you go today in the world, people, if they don't agree with you, they say you are Islamophobic. Okay. So this film has exposed all these people who have been creating fake narratives for so long. And that's why they are rattled. They think by calling it Islamophobic, they can shut me up. Now next question I ask. A land where there used to be 100% Hindus, today they are 0% Hindus. Is it because of Islamophobia? Or is it because of Hindu phobia? Third thing is that when this genocide happened, it happened in the name of the religion. Ralev Galev Shalev means convert to Islam or run or die. And if you decide to run, leave your women behind and you go. I didn't do it. I have not created this. Despite this, if people are not going to be scared of you, then what, what option do people have? Do they have any option? But the third allegation they have is that why are you digging old graves? Don't speak about Aurangzeb. Don't speak about Tipu Sultan. Don't speak about anybody. But they have a right to say anything about the history. They can distort history. They can create anything. For example, there have been many films made on Kashmir issue. I can name them Roja, Fiza, Fana, Mission Kashmir, Heather, Not Without My Daughter or some, some things like that, you know, I don't know the name exactly. But lots of films have been made, at least in Hindi. All those films justified terrorists. All those films are based in 1990. But they do not even mention word Hindu as if in Kashmir Hindus never lived because that's the narrative they want to create. And they justify terrorists as if they have gone and lived with terrorists or interviewed hundreds of terrorists and they know the mind of terrorists. No, it's all fiction, all lies. I have gone and interviewed 700 first generation victims all over the world. On camera, anybody can come and check it. You are cutting 
a woman live on a saw machine after gang raping her and you are saying that it's islamophobia if you are so concerned about islamophobia stand up and speak against terrorism i have put a video yesterday on my social media there were young two kashmiri muslim girls who asked me in chandigarh university about islamophobia i said you speak up against terrorism if you have guts you say i am a muslim and i condemn terrorism there will be no islamophobia in the world and another allegation they have is that why have you shown only hindu victims why not muslim victims the problem is if they were so victimized then why are they living in kashmir why didn't they leave kashmir why only hindus left kashmir you are living there na people who were terrorized they left people who were not terrorized you did not say okay anybody who does not listen to me has to leave kashmir you said no who does not convert to islam has to leave kashmir and i don't want to speak against anybody's faith or religion because i believe that everybody has a right to walk towards the path of truth in whichever manner they want but don't deny me my freedom of belief what's the time now let me know when so i hope you understand the danger which we are going through the whole world wants to destroy this great hindu civilization they don't like it capitalist people don't like it because we are simple people we don't consume so many products i am a marketing student so therefore i am telling you kashmiri people don't like they say okay in kerala everybody wear these clothes you know they don't wear jeans they don't wear pants okay destroy them challenge their customs change their habits change their festivals make everybody the same so that we sell more and more products so capitalists want to destroy this simple society they don't like our mother sacrificing they want our mothers to consume more and more like american uh, mothers socialist people don't like us because we are genuinely socialist we don't have to learn anything from socialists islamic christians they don't like us because we can survive we have the strength to survive without anything our families when they have no money still they survive i very as a joke i go to america very often as a joke i have lots of american friends who come to india they see how indian women work i very jokingly tell them they say oh indian women are great i said you want to change the roles for one day they say, no 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 we can't do that <laughs> that will collapse ask them ask them to get up at 5 in the morning make food for children and husband clean the house do shopping to look after guests in between do all the prayers do fasting do all the rituals and it's not possible it's not possible so therefore the point i am trying to make is very often this question comes what is nationalism in my mind i have done no research i am just telling you from my heart i think the first the first principle of nationalism is to protect this great hindu civilization <laughs> our second most important objective as a nationalist is to teach the people who came and live here to tell them that you are a if you have come to this civilization it is your duty also to make the great values of this civilization prosper you cannot destroy them this hypocrisy will not work when you go to america everybody becomes american but when you come to india 
then you are different uh, then you have different identities only one identity bharatiya no other identity third thing is as a nationalist and especially for young people to restore whatever we have lost if your father has left a house or your grandfather has left a house and somebody else comes and illegally captures it what do you do don't you go to the court and fight for it you spend all your life you say i don't care about the house but it's the honor and dignity of my parents i have to get the house back so if we can fight for our house what else is bharat varsh this is our house we have to restore the lost legacy and heritage we have to protect our culture and this can be done in two ways one by practicing it on daily basis and the second is using our voice i realized that i can use my art to tell the world what is the greatness of hindu civilization and how we are losing it in kashmir files when the who has seen the film here oh great thank you so when this young boy krishna pandit tells you about the great heritage don't you feel proud you feel yes i belong here and i will not let anybody destroy this this is the purpose of the film and i am going to use my art okay okay so i am going to i am taking a pledge i am telling you till my last breath i am going to use my art to promote the great hindu civilization and its values in the end in the end all i want to tell you is i am going i have been invited to british parliament this is the first time a filmmaker has been invited to british parliament <laughs> swami vivekanand once said give me 100 committed young hindus and i'll change india forever i don't know i don't know whether he found 100 committed hindus or not but i promise you i am one of them and i will ensure that these hidden stories of india come out my next film i don't know it can move from malabar to bengal to anywhere i don't know i am researching i am researching and i think you will be happy to see my next film because something which you have been wanting to say for a long time and did not get voice like a brother like a son like your colleague like a fellow indian i promise you i'll become your voice thank you namaskar jai hind thank you thank you sir